Hello, I'm Kyle. I'm the technical content developer at Maple Systems. Welcome to the Maple Systems video training series. You will need to watch the video how to connect to Codasys using a remote I.O. and an HMI before you continue watching this video. And you can find that video on the How to Connect to Codasys Using a Remote I.O. and HMI tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. In the previous video, I showed you how to go online in Codasys with an IRETN 40R remote I.O. and CMT device through Modbus communication. In this video, I'll be showing you how to communicate via Modbus with a CMT device, IRETN 40R, and Codasys to turn a digital input and output on and off utilizing EB Pro, Easy Remote I.O., and the Codasys application software. Now, in the previous video, I explained how you would set up the network configuration, but in this diagram, I am showing an IRETN 40R. So this is how you would wire the digital input. The 24 volts represents the input signal. So however you are sending the 24 volts, that will be wired into channel zero. In this case, on terminal one, course you could use any of the input channels here on terminal 1 as well on terminal 2 and the 0 volts would go into S0 if you're using channel 0 through 5 if you're using 6 through 11 it would go into S1 and the same for terminal 2 in the previous video I established connection in Codasys with our IRETN 40R in this video I'm going to cover how you would set up programs and tags in Codasys and I'm going to turn a digital input and output on and off and display it on a CMT user interface, Easy Remote I.O. and the Codasys application. So now I'm going to add a POU, which is a programmable organization unit. So you would use a POU to write the source code for your controller. And the type of POU I'll be using is a program POU. So there are different types of POUs. So a program is one. You can also use a function block, an active, a transition. These are just some of the objects within a POU. And in this case, we're going to use a program POU. In this program, we will define our variables, which will be the tags we'll be using, and create the ladder diagram. So to do that, click on application, right click, go to add object, POU. So this is a program organization unit. So implementation language will be ladder logic diagram. Click add. So this window is where you type your variables. This is where you define your variables. And in this window, this is where you would insert your ladder diagram. So this is gonna be your actual ladder diagram that you'll be communicating with. So in this window, I'm going to define a digital input tag and a digital output tag to use in this window. So this will be my actual ladder diagram. So I can't use any variables here without defining them in this window first. So di underscore i, so digital input underscore terminal one, which is a terminal we're using on the IRETN 40R, underscore zero, space, colon, bool, which is the data type, semicolon, hit enter. And now we're gonna type the digital output, which will be dq, Q is abbreviation for output, and then terminal one, and then zero, zero, space, colon, pool, semicolon, enter. If you would like to get more information on the types of variables and data types, you can always go to the help in Codasys and then click index. And when you get to the index, you can just type in data types under look for, and then click data type and gives you a description of the data types. You can go to standard data types. You can also go to user-defined data types. And also here on the left, you can type any bit and it gives you a description. Click on the plus sign for standard data types. If you'd like to find out more on integer data types, click. And it gives you different types of integer data types. You can go back. If you'd like to find out anything on the different types of data types, standard data types, integer data types, just click on the help tab and click on index and you can type anything under look for. And that's all the variables we'll be typing here. So now let's go down to our 
ladder diagram. We're going to right click, click insert contact, click the question marks, the three ellipses. We're going to add that digital input and then right click again and insert coil, three question marks, ellipsis, select the digital output, hit OK. And now we will need to map these channels to our IRETN40R, so our Modbus channel. So in order to do that, let's go to our Modbus TCP slave here. So here is where you will assign the tags that you just created in your POU program to the actual IRETN40R remote I.O. channels. So in order to turn on the physical digital input and outputs, the tags have to be mapped here to the actual channels. So when you look at these channels, this is the same layout as the physical IRETN40R. Remember, in the previous video, when we exported the XML file from Easy Remote I.O. and imported it into Codasys to create this slave device. Well, these are the channels that we imported. On the IRETN40R, there are 24 digital inputs between Terminal 1 and Terminal 2, and 16 digital outputs between Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. So that's what you're seeing here, but there are also four extra channels left over, each terminal for digital input and digital output. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if you go to digital input, built-in, terminal one, digital input, click the plus sign. There you can notice there's zero and one here. Digital input zero is the first six digital inputs on your IRE1040R, and digital input one are the last six. But you'll notice that when you drop this down, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last two, seven and eight, even though they're labeled six and seven, bit zero is the first bit. So the last two here are the leftover. So for each channel, there are two leftover. These are just an offset of memory and they don't have any use for the physical remote IO. So you can just ignore these. When you put that into consideration, there are only 24 digital inputs between terminal one and two and only 16 digital outputs between terminals one and two. There are 12 digital inputs for terminal one and there are 12 digital inputs for terminal two and then there are eight digital outputs for terminal one and eight digital outputs for terminal two. And so you'll notice that for the digital outputs here, there is an R and then there's a W. This stands for read and write. To get an explanation on this, go to your Modbus slave channel and you'll see it gives you an access type here. So the R is just a read coil and then the W is a write coil. So for the digital input, you notice that it's just a read input. That's because it's just reading the digital input. So that's fine. And for the digital output, we want to write. So you'll want to assign the digital output tag to the right multiple coil. So if you go back to your IO mapping, and now that I've explained all that, you can probably take a guess where we want to assign digital input channel zero terminal one. So go to this channel here, built in terminal one, digital input, drop this down. The first six, because we're using channel zero, we'll want to choose this one right here. This will be for the, the last six on terminal one. So I'm gonna drop this down and you can see I already assigned it here. Digital input channel zero, which will be right here for terminal one. And so to do that, you'll double click on variable, the variable column here and three ellipses. And we'll wanna choose from application, POU, and then choose digital input terminal one zero, hit okay. And so that's assigned to the correct channel. Now that's mapped out to the actual IRETN40R remote IO. And for the digital output, we want to just write the digital output channel zero terminal one. That would be right here. This is the right channel. Drop this down, just down again. And so we want channel zero for digital output. So double click here, three ellipsis, and choose the DQ, which is digital output, terminal one, channel zero. Next, we need to create a task. So go to main task here on the left, right click, add object, and we need to call the program that we created. So program call, three ellipsis, drop down the application, select the POU program, hit okay, then hit add. And 
Finally, we'll need to add a symbol configuration. A symbol configuration object is used to give specific access rights to the project variables. So you can access the variables from the outside. So in order to communicate codices to EB Pro, we'll need to create a symbol configuration to compile our variables and create a code, which will be an XML file, which will be generated to import into our EB Pro project. And the file format in the XML file will be the application name, then the POU, and then the variables, which would be the digital input and output tags that are in our program. So go to application, right click, add object, symbol configuration. So we're gonna create a remote access symbol configuration, optimize layout, hit add. And now we want to compile the program that we just created. So to do that, you're going to click build. And when you hit build, if you go down to your messages, you'll see any compile errors here. So it says build started. It says the application up to date, compile complete, and there are zero errors. So that is what you want to see here. And then we want to just grab those tags that we just created. So those two variables. So we wanna to go to our POU here for symbol, drop this down and just select these two tags. And now we're gonna go up to build and we're going to generate a code. And like I said earlier, in order to communicate the Codices application to EB Pro, you need to generate this code. This is that communication line. So when you generate a code, it will create an XML file, which will be in your project file folder. And I mentioned that it will be the application name, then the POU, and then the tags in that POU program, the digital input pool and the digital output pool. And then you'll import that into EB Pro, and then you'll be able to assign those tags to a bitlamp that will show the digital input and output turning on and off. So we're gonna generate this code, and you don't see any errors down here under messages. So if you go here, it says that you have generated the code. Let's go online. So go to online, log in. Log in with online change. Make sure that you always click that option, hit OK. And you can see here how everything is online. And let's go to our POU program. And I'm going to send 24 volts to my digital input. And then that will turn on digital output as well. And you can see that's working. Both of the bools are true. Digital input and output are on. So now let's go into EB Pro and we want to set up our CMT user interface. So what my EB Pro project. So the next step is connecting the Codasys application that we are just in to EB Pro. Now earlier on I explained the generating code in Codasys, which creates that XML file. So this step, we're going to import that XML file and then we'll be able to assign those tags to these bitlamps. To get more information on EB Pro, you can always visit the Video Center on the Maple Systems website where you can watch training videos. And also there are sample projects as well on the Maple Systems website. I just wanna show you how you would import that XML file and then assign those tags to these bitlamps. So I have one for digital input and I have one for digital output. So go to home, system parameters and you'll need to add these two devices so you'll need the remote io modbus tcp and you'll need the built-in codasys driver so to do that you go to new device and on the list here and you'll select these two devices built-in codasys and remote io and then under built-in codasys you're going to import that xml file so import tags two characters per word and grab that XML file that you just exported from Codasys, hit OK, and it gives you a message, imported tag information successfully, hit OK, and then hit OK again. Now let's make sure those tags are assigned to the appropriate bitlamps, double click on digital input bitlamp, and you can see that here are those tags. So here's digital input for this one, so that's good. Hit OK, and then go to the digital output, make sure that's the correct tag and it is so at this point 
you can download the project to your CMT device and then we will send 24 volts and see if these turn on. So let's go to project, download. Once it finishes downloading, hit exit. So on this screen, we have Codasys in the background online. Easier Mo IO is online and we have our CMT viewer, which is looking at the CMT device user interface. And then right here in the middle is the live camera feed of the actual IR ETN40R. I wanted to show you every viewpoint here to show the Modbus communication working through all the devices. So when we send 24 volts into the digital input, you will see it turn on in easy remote, the CMT device, Codasys, and the actual IR ETN40R. And then as well, digital output turn on. So I'm going to send 24 volts right now. And you can see that it turned on in codices. Digital input zero is on. Digital output zero is on in easy remote as well on the CMT device. And you can see that it's on the actual IR ETN 40R. Turn it off, turn it back on, and you can see it working. Now we have established Modbus communication between Codasys, the IR etn 40 r and the CMT device. This is all I'll be covering today. To get more information, please visit the how to turn the digital I.O. on and off using Codasys with an HMI and remote I.O. tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.